In this video, we are going to discuss top 10 interview questions often asked in deep learning interviews. This is part of our ongoing uh, series of interview questions where we are adding new videos uh, every week. So do not forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on any of this. On this note, let's begin. This question asks how you evaluate the performance of a deep learning model and what are the metrics used for it. So to evaluate the performance of a deep learning model, we use uh, various metrics, but uh, that mainly depends on the type of the problem. So for a classification problem, it will be one metric and for a regression, it will be a different metric. So let's look at the metrics that are used. As you can see in this table, uh, if it is a classification problem, we use various metrics like accuracy, precision recall, F1 score, ROC, AUC and confusion metrics. And if it is a regression problem, then we use a matrix such as mean squared error, root mean squared error, mean absolute error, and R squared. Let's move on to the next question. This question asks about the few ethical considerations when we are using deep learning model. So ethical considerations in using deep learning models include ensuring data privacy, preventing bias and discrimination in model predictions, also transparency in how models make decisions, and uh, accountability for the outcomes produced by these models. It's also important to consider the environmental impact of training large models as they require uh, tons of compute and the potential misuses of this AI technology. At this point, let's move on to the next question. This question asks us to draw a comparison and contrast between TensorFlow and PyTorch. But before getting into it, let us know what these terms mean. Now, TensorFlow is an open source deep learning framework by Google that has evolved from a research tool to a powerful model builder. On the other hand, PyTorch is a Python based uh, deep learning framework that helps in implementing and building deep neural network architectures. Coming to the comparison and uh, contrast, we are doing these uh, based on a few parameters. The first parameter is graph type. Uh, TensorFlow uses uh, static graphs while PyTorch uses dynamic graphs. Second parameter is ease of use. PyTorch is often considered uh, more user friendly and easier for prototyping. Third parameter is deployment. TensorFlow is more established for uh, production environments. Fourth parameter is community and support. So both have uh, strong community support, but TensorFlow historically has had a larger user base. Finally, our last parameter is performance. Uh, both continuously evolve and uh, can depend on the specific use case you are working on. At this point, let's move on to the next question. This question asks about how recurrent uh, neural networks work and what are the differences between LSTMs and GRUs. So before jumping into this, let us understand what RNNs are. They are a type of uh, neural network designed for processing sequential data. They are particularly effective for uh, tasks where the context from previous data points is essential for understanding the current data points, such as in language modeling or uh, time series analysis. Let me break this down into simple term. Imagine you are reading a story and each sentence is like a piece of a puzzle. RNNs are like a brain that helps understand the story by considering the sentences one by one. It pays attention to what happened before to make sense of what's happening right now. Let's see how RNNs work. Well, RNNs implement sequential processing where uh, they process data sequences by maintaining a memory, also called hidden state, of previous inputs. As we told you earlier, imagine someone is reading a book and uh, they remember what happened on the previous page so they can understand the story better. RNNs also apply the same in form of weights to each step of the input sequence, allowing the model to generalize across different sequence positions. If I have to simplify this, uh, it means if you are trying to solve a puzzle, each piece of the puzzle needs a special tool to fit it in place. In an RNN, instead of having a different tool for each piece, it uses the same tool or weights for uh, every step of the sequence. This means the network doesn't have to learn new things for each part of the sequence. It can use what it already knows. So by sharing these weights, the RNN can be more efficient and generalize better across different parts of the sequence. However, there are challenges like struggling with long term dependencies due to issues like vanishing or exploding gradients and uh, advanced RNN architectures like long short term memory uh, and gated recurrent units will address these challenges for us. 
Now let us look at the differences between LSTM and GRU. This is a table uh, which discusses uh, the differences between them. Take a screenshot of uh, this for your reference. We'll move on to the next question at this point. This question asks the concept of attention mechanism and how it is used in models like transformers. So the attention mechanism computes a set of attention scores, often called attention weights, for each element in the input sequence. These uh, scores determine how much attention or emphasis the model should give to each element when making predictions. Let me explain this in simple terms. Imagine you are reading a book again and uh, there's a highlighted section that uh, you focus on more than the rest of the text. The attention mechanism in deep learning is somewhat like that. It's a technique that helps neural networks pay more attention to certain parts of the input data than others. Now let us see how attention mechanism works in transformer models. The attention mechanism in transformers typically involves three key components, query, key, and value. These components are used to calculate attention scores and generate a weighted sum of values, providing a context vector for each position in the sequence. By incorporating attention mechanism, models like transformers exhibit enhanced performance in capturing long-range dependencies and understanding the contextual relationships within sequences. This makes them particularly effective for uh, natural language processing tasks, including machine translation, text summarization, and language understanding. Overall, attention mechanism contributes significantly to the success of transformer models in various deep learning applications. Now let us move on to the next question. This question asks how deep learning can be used in NLP tasks like machine learning and text generation. So deep learning is pivotal in advancing uh, natural language processing tasks. It offers many sophisticated machine translation and text generation approaches. Let me break down how deep learning is applied in each of these domains. First is machine translation. Deep learning models, particularly uh, sequence to sequence architectures, have revolutionized machine translation. These models, often based on RNNs or transformer architecture, basically learn to understand the context of a sentence in one language and generate a coherent translation in another. Additionally, the attention mechanism within these models enable them to focus on specific parts of the input sequence, resulting in accurate translations. The next use case is text generation. For tasks like text generation, deep uh, learning models, especially generative models like LSTMs or transformers are used. How does these models work? Well, these models are trained on large text corpora to learn patterns and dependencies within the data. During generation, the model can produce new, contextually relevant text by sampling from the learned distribution of words. This is widely used in chatbots, content creation, and creative writing applications. In both cases, the power of deep learning lies in its ability to automatically learn hierarchical representations and indicate patterns from vast amounts of data. The adaptability and scalability of deep learning makes it a cornerstone in the evolution of NLP, providing effective solutions for language-related tasks across various domains. Let's check out the next question. This question inquires about GANs and uh, their training process. GANs or uh, Generative Adversarial Networks are a class of AI algorithms introduced by Ian Goodfellow and his colleagues in 2014. This is a type of AI where two models compete, one generating data and the other trying to distinguish it from real data, leading to increasingly realistic and sophisticated outputs like two artists pushing each other to create better work. In other words, GANs consist of uh, two neural networks, a generator, other one discriminator, engaged in an adversarial training process. It has a generator and the generator aims to create realistic images from a random noise or a latent space such as images. Its primary goal is to produce data indistinguishable from real examples in the training set. The other part in GAN is discriminator. The discriminator evaluates the generated and the real data and aims to distinguish between the two. It essentially acts as a judge, determining the authenticity of the generated samples. Now let us look at the GANs training process. The training process involves a continuous back and forth between the generator and the discriminator. The generator refines its output based on the feedback from the discriminator, which in turn adapts to better differentiate between real and generated data. This adversarial loop continues until the generator produces high quality realistic outputs. In other words, the generator is like an artist trying to create paintings. First, it makes random doodles, 
that uh, resemble real paintings and tries to refine them into more realistic paintings. The discriminator is like a tough art critic who wants to tell if a painting is real or fake produced by the generator. Both of them are in uh, constant competition. The artist or generator keeps improving to create more realistic paintings while the critic or uh, discriminator gets better at distinguishing between real and fake paintings. This adversarial loop continues until the artist becomes so good at uh, creating realistic paintings that the critic can hardly tell the difference between real and generated ones. There are many potential applications of GANs. They have uh, showcased remarkable success in various domains, making them versatile and powerful tools for tasks involving data generation, transformation, and enhancement. These are the use cases of GANs. Uh, let us move on to the next question. This question asks about how explainability and interpretability can be improved in deep learning models. But before getting into that, let us uh, first see what these terms mean. Model explainability refers to the concept of being able to understand the machine learning model. For example, if a healthcare model is predicting whether a patient is suffering from a particular disease or not, the medical practitioners need to know what parameters the model is taking into account or if model contains any bias. So it is necessary that once the model is deployed in the real world, then the model developers can explain the model. Coming to interpretability, it refers to the ability to understand the decision-making process of an AI model. An interpretable model is transparent in its operation and provides information about the relationships between the input and its output. So an interpretable algorithm can be explained clearly uh, and understandably by a human being. Simplifying it, interpretability focuses on understanding the inner workings of the model while explainability focuses on explaining the decisions made. Enhancing the explainability and interpretability of uh, deep learning models is crucial for building trust and understanding uh, their decision-making process. This table shows the various uh, strategies to achieve this. Uh, the first one is simplifying architectures, uh, streamlining models architecture by opting for uh, simpler architecture facilitates better understanding. The second way is uh, utilizing explainable models. Thereafter comes incorporating attention mechanism, layer-wise relevance, propagation, local interpretable model agnostic explanations, attention maps and grad cam, ensuring feature importance uh, communications and interactive visual tools. Uh, we have provided uh, explanation to all of these parameters over here. If you want to take a screenshot of this uh, particular screen to keep it with you for your later reference. At this point, let's move on to the next question. All right, this question focuses on challenges uh, deep learning models face in production environments. Now, deploying deep learning models in production comes with unique challenges and these problems require careful consideration and strategic solutions. So what are these problems? First is scalability. Uh, wherein ensuring the deployed model can handle increased demand and workload is crucial. Scalability challenges may arise due to varying traffic patterns, diverse user inputs, and uh, evolving data distributions. Next comes hardware requirement. Deep learning models often demand substantial computation resources, including GPUs and TPUs. So it is to be ensured that hardware requirement is sufficiently met. Next comes real-time performance. Uh, which could be achieved through real-time uh, performance tracking, especially for applications requiring low latency responses, uh, and it poses a significant challenge and needs to be managed. Next comes data privacy and security, uh, which involves handling sensitive data in production environments, which basically requires uh, robust security measures. And finally, there is continuous monitoring and maintenance. Apart from this, we also have uh, versioning and model governance, interoperability, explainability and interpretability and cost optimization, which are additional set of challenges which are to be managed when a deep learning model is deployed in a production environment. You may take a screenshot of these two slides for your uh, later reference. Let's move on to the next question. Deep learning support vector machines and decision trees are distinct machine learning approaches with unique characteristics. And uh, in this table here, we have uh, shown their usage based on uh, representation of data, handling complexity, and uh, interpretability and applications. Let's uh, uh, discuss them one by one. First comes representation of data. 
Deep learning uh, learns hierarchical representations. Support vector machine utilizes hyperplanes while decision trees employ if else conditions to process data. Then comes handling complexity. While deep learning uh, naturally excels in complex tasks, SVM is effective in high dimensional space and, de and decision trees are uh, suitable for tasks with interpretable rules. Then comes training and interpretability. While deep learning requires large labeled data and may lack interpretability, SVM is effective with the moderate size uh, data set and decision trees uh, shine on this particular parameter. Then comes applications. Deep learning is widely used uh, in image recognition and uh, natural language processing. SVM is used in bioinformatics and uh, text categorization while decision tree is used in medical diagnosis and recommendation systems. Take a screenshot of this screen for your uh, later reference. So guys, that's all we had for you today. If you have any more questions, let us know in the comment section and we'll get back to you. Subscribe to our channel for more such uh, interesting data tech content. Goodbye to you and happy prepping.